Uh, Coach, you won the Mid-American Conference. We have a lot of Bobcat fans up here in the northeast part of the state, as well as the MAC fans in general. First of all, uh, appreciate the time joining us from Indianapolis. How have the first couple of practices gone as you as you prepare for the Virginia Cavaliers? And uh, number one, thanks for having me. And um, you know, practices have been going well. It's uh, kind of been Groundhog Day. We came right from Cleveland uh, on Sunday to Indianapolis. And uh, we were able to watch the selection show together as a team. And then we had our first COVID test. And every kid had to go to their own room and quarantine. And then we had a second test on the next day. And once we got the uh, you know negative return, we were able to go practice you know, on Monday, which was good to get out. And you know we just got some shots up. And uh, yesterday, we were able to go down to Bloomington at Indiana University and uh, you know practice on, on their court where we're going to play. So that was really good as well. When you look at, um, you mentioned COVID, and the, one of the national stories is the team you're playing, Virginia, has been quarantined, isn't able to travel uh, early, isn't going to have a lot of practice time. How do you approach that? When, when we were talking off air a few minutes ago, you kind of explained to me that's already been addressed with your team. Yeah, you know, so my understanding is it's a backup role player that, that tested positive, won't be playing, and you know, they were contact traced like you know everyone has been all year. And, you know, I told our guys, you know, we went through the same thing. We were on a 21 day pause and had one practice uh, 5v5 before we played Akron. And, you know, we didn't have Jason Preston. We didn't have Dwight Wilson that game. And uh, I think we won by double figures. So, you know, our our guys know that they could come in and it's going to be the same Virginia team that, you know, the pause probably won't affect them. Now, you mentioned Jason Preston. You mentioned Dwight Wilson. Those are two of your five starters. All five of your starters in double figures. You have a sixth player that averages close to nine points a game. It's balanced scoring. Um, how much fun is it to coach uh, uh, this group? Yeah, awesome, awesome group to be around. Love being around in practice, off the court. And, you know, you can tell by the watching them play, even the bench guys, that they love each other. And the excitement they have, the enthusiasm they have. You know, like you mentioned, you know, I think we're top, you know, 10 in the country in assists, number one in the MAC. You know, multiple guys in double figures. They share the basketball, which uh, I think has really you know, led to our 9 out of 10 wins uh, recently. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Jason Preston. Uh, that's a guy that um, when you listen to the national things, all the, all the basketball experts from college say, uh, America is going to learn about Jason Preston. Tell us a little bit about him. We saw him in the Mid-American Conference Tournament. Uh, does everything on the court you as a coach would like. Yeah, he, he's the type of player that makes you a better coach. You know, he, he just d- does everything well and makes everyone around him better. And if, if the viewers don't know his story, they need to Google, you know, Jason Preston because his, his life's a movie. And what he's been through adversity-wise the last five years to where he is now, is just it's, it's the American dream. You know, as a senior in high school, he was six feet tall, 140 pounds, scored 52 points his whole senior year. And uh, now, you know, he's first team all MAC, first team all district, you know, MVP of the MAC tournament. And, you know, he, he's got a bright future. He's going to be playing for money someday. Absolutely. Averaging better than 15 points, seven rebounds, seven assists. And he is sixth in the NCAA in assists at 7.2 assists per game. Uh, Jeff, let's talk a little bit about you. Um, you're a graduate of Ohio, in 1995 grad. Um, I, you were a two year captain there for the Bobcats in the 90s. Safe to say this is a dream job for you? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I was born and raised Northeast Ohio. You know, huge Indians, Cavs, Browns, lived it, died it, cried it, laughed it. And, uh, you know, I ended up going to Ohio University uh, my first, uh, you know, few years. And I earned a scholarship. I was a walk-on. I tore my ACL in the state all-star game. And uh, my recruiting kind of stopped. And, you know, it kind of started and ended the same way. 20 games into my senior year, I tore my ACL for the third time, and uh, that ended my career. And at the end of the year, uh, my head coach, Larry Hunter, lost an assistant, asked me if I'd be interested in coaching. And I tell people I literally fell into coaching, and that's how I started. And You know, my dream job has always been to be the head coach of my alma mater. And, uh, you know, two years ago yesterday was the uh, anniversary of my press conference in just very grateful to be here and representing, you know, the great uh, Ohio University. Now, you were passed over a couple times as well, so it was persistence. You wanted that job. You kept going after it. And, and how happy were you when it, when it finally happened? 
Yeah, when I was at Ohio State, you know, uh, we had some really good teams. We were number one in the country, 34 and three, another year 31 and eight, and, and got bypassed twice. And, and um, you know, it was frustrating, but, you know, wasn't my decision. So I ended up going to Stony Brook University on Long Island for three years as the head coach. And my third year there, we were 24 and eight. You know, we beat South Carolina, George Washington, Rhode Island, Northern Iowa, had everybody coming back. And I really wasn't looking to leave. And Ohio University uh, called, and, uh, you know, third time was a charm. All right, let's focus again on this upcoming game. What's the message to the Bobcats as they get ready to take the floor against the Virginia Cavaliers from the ACC? Yeah, the biggest thing is, you know, to believe. Believe you can win. You know, have the confidence you can win. And our guys have done a great job. You know, if you, know, you saw the MAC tournament, you know, I don't know if there's been a run where anyone's gone through and, and led for 117 out of 120 minutes, uh, three straight games. And two of those were your underdogs. And, uh, you know, we dominated Kent State to start and that kind of set the tone. So our, our guys are playing with a lot of confidence right now, and, and we need that to carry over. Last thing I'll ask you before I let you go, and again, appreciate, appreciate the time from Indianapolis. When the Bobcats are, are playing well on the court, what are we seeing uh, watching Ohio University play? Yeah, I think number one, you know, an up-tempo, share the basketball mentality. And, you know, defensively, the start of the year, we were poor. You know, that was our Achilles heel. And I think over the last month and a half, we've corrected that. Our defense and our rebounding have led us to, you know, the MAC championship, nine out of ten wins. And, you know, that's going to be the key. And we're playing a Virginia team that's very efficient. Uh, they're great on defense. They're very good on offense. And, you know, it's going to be a low-possession game. So we, we have to, you know, make every possession – you know, count.